Hi there. My name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech, and this is an 8x8x8 LED cube created by students on my retrofuturistic hardware team at Georgia Tech. And yes, if you do the math, that is 512 LEDs. We are using an Arduino Nano to control the cube, but you could, of course, use other kinds of microcontrollers. We laser cut an acrylic case for it because the cube itself is fairly fragile. The only support for the LEDs is actually the wires that connect the LEDs. The chips used in the cube do have some hardware pulse width modulation ability to control brightness levels, but you can't hardware PWM individual pixels, only groups of pixels. So my student Parker Jones created a software PWM library. This is a classic snake game he wrote using the library. Now, if you were to look at this in person, you wouldn't see the flickering that you see on the video here. The flickering is an artifact of the way that camera is sampling. If you see it in person, your eyes blur things out over time, and you wouldn't see the flicker. You would see variations of brightness. Notice here the snake wraps around at the edges, but if you wanted, you could program this so that the game ends when you hit the wall or whatever you want. Our work on this is an open source project, so you can go to Parker's GitHub, J. Parker Jones, and click on LED Cube. And here you will find the files he made for laser cutting the acrylic for the case. And you will also find all of the source code. So here you'll find the library for the pulse width modulation in software, as well as the code for the snake game. Parker also wrote a user's manual for it. Let's see, to see that doc file, we have to view raw. So the user's manual explains what connections to make and explains how to use the library and explains how the library works, all sorts of cool stuff. Oh, and I should mention the cube itself is this Jolly Cube kit. So when you order the kit, you get a bunch of these circuit boards and this is what the cube is constructed from. So when we built it, we actually got the full version of the kit that also includes the LEDs. I have a bunch of drawers full of LEDs, but by ordering them all at once from the kit, I was sure that they all would match. So all of Parker's instructions and the library assumes that you're using this kit and these chips, but you could probably adapt it to other chips and other LED cube types. This is just one of many interesting projects that students on my vertically integrated projects team have been working on. There's more to come.